All right, everyone, we're going to be doing an unboxing video of the Bates Hundo LTS Bait Finesse Reel. Just got back from iCast. There's a good amount of reels released this year. Not like a tremendous amount, but I have to say this guy here, definitely one of the most highest anticipated reel for me and likely for you guys as well. So you guys ready to take a look at this reel? Because I am ready to show you all this reel. Quick background story before we start this video. Bates did reach out to me around May of 2023. They asked me if I could test out their Bates Hundo bait casting reel and I declined them. And the reason why I declined them was because I was busy and I was like, hey, I wanna focus on bait finesse reels. So if you guys have any interest in creating a shallow spool reel, you guys can let me know and then when it's available, I will go ahead and test it. And they did tell me that they were interested and I was like, you know what? Will you guys be on iCast 2023? It's like, yes. I was like, okay, I'll see you there and we'll talk then. So I did meet up with them at 2023 iCast show. I brought some bait finesse reels. I showed them all the stuff that I have to, and I gave them some pointers of where they should go. And then they were like so impressed. They wanted to send me a couple of prototype spools in which they did in around a November-ish timeframe. So I was able to play around with Bates Hondo with a couple spools and I gave my feedback and behold, we now have the Hondo LTS. So I am very excited to be part of this little uh, project they have here and I can't wait to test this on the water as well as fish it several trips and then give more feedback of how this reel behaves. So isn't it exciting? So let's get this unboxing started. The first thing we wanna do is take a look at the box. I mean, I'm comparing these boxes with uh, many other brands out there. I gotta say, Bates box are so amazing. Very well put together and a lot of specs. Who doesn't love specs on a box, right? So size 100 reel, uh, as I mentioned before, I feel like the Hundo itself is more of a size 80, closer to a size 80. Anyway, we'll just move on. We have the gear ratio of 7.101 gear ratio. And I wanna see if there's a IPT here because it's really, really important to actually know what the IPT is. So there we go, we got 28 inch per crank for this 7.101 gear ratio. I think um, that is when it's max. And this is a pretty big spool, I believe. I will measure the spool when we open it up. Um, What's really important is that it has 8.5 pound of drag, okay? And um, that's perfect for bait finesse. Anything more? Well, yeah, you may snap some line by accident, especially when you use thin line. Uh, five ounce, very impressive, given that this is a fully CNC'd uh, reel from aluminum. See, right there, CNC precision cut 6061 T-bar. Ooh, man, I'm telling you, this thing is so sexy. Anyways, uh, I'm not gonna read everything here, okay? But I really like right here. Built to last, no plastic toys here. Seriously, this thing is a beast. I played with the regular Hundo for a while now, uh, salt water. That thing is uh, pretty good, pretty darn good. But anyway, we are gonna open this box up and we're gonna take a look of this reel. There we go, look at that. I'm telling you, man, I love their boxes and how they package everything. So let's get this baddie out. Beautiful reel, so beautiful. And then of course they have that neoprene bag they were talking about. Let's take a look at that first. There you go. This is definitely good quality stuff, just like their other reels. All right. Look at that. All right, let's put this on the side. Get all my other tools, my scale. Got to turn it all on, right? Also my caliper. We are ready to go. And behold, the Hundo LTS looking beautiful. I do have the regular old uh, Hundo right here. They actually have a new one, the Hundo Salt version, Salt Hundo, I believe, and it, it's, it's a little bit different, but if you guys take a look side by side, as you see, pretty much the same body, different colors for a couple things, and also the knob, you see the texture is different. Very, very cool. The handle, the handle knobs are the same. Um, this handle itself is a little bit different. The nut is different. But yeah, uh, everything else is pretty much the same looking. So anyway, let me put this on the side and we're gonna focus on this guy. So let's start from all the way to the left, shall we? So we have this material here, it's a plastic. It's a hard plastic, but you can feel that it does give a little bit, so it's not like super hard. Very grippy. I actually love it. I've been using the, the other reel right there that you, you guys have uh, seen, and I do like it. And this guy here is, uh, let me take a look at the box for one second. That is, um, 
size 88 millimeter CNC, of course, because they CNC everything, right? Um, yeah, handle feels great. There is the star drag right there, and it sounds very loud. Yeah, I love the color too. Let's listen to the drag clicker for a second. Ooh. All right, you guys are probably wondering what I'm doing and why I'm like so impressed and amazed. So, as you guys may know, I have been um, on the fence on whether I want drag clickers or don't want drag clickers. And it all comes to smoothness, right? When I play with Bay Finesse Reels and I play with, let's say, bigger spools and I use like heavier stuff, I don't really care for the drag clicker going off or not because, you know, I'm using thicker line. But from my ultralight side, I, I like to have it, especially because I know I'll be using the ultralight stuff fishing, let's say, noisy waters, like streams and stuff, and I do want a drag clicker. But this guy right here, they actually feel very, very smooth. Give me a second. Let me, let me grab another reel for a second. Aha! I grabbed this one right here, Japanese reel. This is the saltest. I just got this one. Not a bait finesse reel, but it does have a click on it. So listen to this. Definitely loud. And I don't know if I can do this. You guys can see it. So it feels like the clicks here are larger. Like, like you got to crank more in order to um, get it to click. This guy right here is more micro-ish. Maybe. I, I don't know. I, I would have to open these up in order to see what's the difference. But what I want to say is this guy here feels smoother than this guy for the drag. Okay, so I have no idea. I need to probably talk to him and uh, figure out the technicality or maybe uh, someone would open this guy up and take a look at the drag clicker. But this actually feels very smooth. Very smooth. Okay, anyway, uh, let's take a look at everything else. Let's take a look at this guy right here. Baits, look at that. Is this thing pre-tuned? It does have a little clack here, this micro clack. I don't know if this pre-tuned like Daiwa, but uh, for y'all who don't know about uh, magnetic breaking reels, because this is a magnetic breaking reel, how we configure this reel is very simple. We're going to set the tension loose as possible, right? And then we're going to tighten slowly into there's like no left and right movement. And there is just a little bit here. So maybe they didn't set it up, but it's always good to have uh, loose, everything loose when you put everything in a box, right? So anyways, I think I'm going to have it like right here for when I go do my cast testing right there. But yeah, so far it looks great. There is like no tolerance on this. Like some reels, even Japanese reels, right? Like you look at this, Plas uh, plastic, by the way, this is plastic and this, this is not plastic. This one have very, very little, which is great. Really great. And then we take a Chinese reel, like this guy right here. Okay, the Aurora. And a lot of people is raving about this. And then it, to me, it's, I don't know. I feel like I'm spoiled right now with all the uh, good reels right now. Yen is down right now. And then we have this freaking really high end reel, right? Yeah, do you see this? No good. No good. This is like junk to me. Anyways. Yeah, everything here, man. Oh my gosh. So freaking beautiful. Uh, let's take a look at the worm gear for a second. So I am actually curious if they actually change the worm gear and make it a little faster because for bait finesse reels, a lot of folks are going to be using thin PE line. But with the drag low, it shouldn't be that bad. But I would love it if uh, this guy here is faster than uh, the other hundle. And I guess the best way to test it is we're going to put this all to the edge right there. And let's count how many times, how many cranks it needs to go all to one end to the other end. Ready? One, two, three, four, uh, almost five. Five and a half to get all the way across and back. Okay, so let me just grab this guy right here. Let's do the same thing. Let's put everything on the side. Right about here. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. I think that's six. Let's try again one more time. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, almost six. So uh, I feel like potentially, potentially, right? 
They could improve this by making this worm gear just a little bit faster so that, again, we want those line, the thin PE line to go back and forth a lot quicker so that it doesn't dig in. So uh, I wonder if uh, this will be a problem for this reel. I think uh, many, many reels, like the Daiwa Silver Wolf, that's uh, the PE edition, they do have a fast worm gear. That's probably one of the fastest worm gears that I have in my arsenal. But uh, I don't think it's gonna be a big issue, but let's, let's find out, right? We're gonna find out when we test this whole thing. But other than that, everything right now looks really sexy, okay? So here you guys go. This is the, uh, the brake dial. And there's actually an inner dial as well. I'll show you guys later for those who are not familiar. Here's a serial number if you guys need to do any sort of a warranty. You guys say this reel is expensive, but man, this is amazing warranty. Like there is no brand out there have a warranty like this reel here. It basically is a three year warranty, right? If it's a manufactured defect, if they can't fix it, they can send you a brand new reel, like no BS, <laughs> which is great, isn't it? Like it's, it's the best out there. Like, is there any other warranty out there today that has something like this? I don't think so. I mean. I'm playing around with this reel, tolerance, everything's like amazing. Like to the dot, man, to the dot. This is how much this reel weighs. Holy crap, pretty much on the dot, five ounces. Super light, super duper light. All right, so let's open this bad boy up. Lock, unlock, right? So let's unlock. There you go. Breaking system right here. Let's talk about the breaking system very quick. This is basically very Daiwa inspired. We have a spool here that rotates okay it goes out so it's like sv style and as you see here there's actually notches here you basically could change it for a lot of brakes or very very little brakes i find myself using it uh at three so all you do is put one finger on top so the ring doesn't move and then you take your other fingernail and just click it just like that i am assuming all my Casting will be around, you know, in the middle. So I'm gonna start off there. If I need to add more, I'll add more. If I need less, I'll do less. But uh, so far for the hundo, regular hundo, I just have everything in the middle and it's like working flawlessly. It's, it's freaking fine. So anyway, a um, couple of things to look at, right? We have not micro bearings. So if we want to cast lighter lures, we will probably want to put micro bearings, but Given that this is a very large spool, I don't think it's gonna be for like a sub one gram. So let's weigh and measure the spool for a second. But yeah, this is this is a pretty large spool. Let's take a look for a second. So uh, with the bearing on, it's 8.5, 8.6. So I would say uh, if you subtract 1.1 grams from here, we have a uh, 7.5 gram spool, which is a pretty good spool, like really nice spool. spool. It will do some good light lures. You can handle some uh, heavier lures and everything. And let me just grab my calipers for a second. I just bought new calipers. Well, my first pair ever. Okay, and some cheap stuff on Amazon. So hopefully it's uh, very accurate. Let's just open this bad boy up and let's measure this guy here. All right, so the outer diameter is gonna be uh, 34 and the inner one is about 29, okay, 28.8. So yeah, this is a very large spool. I don't think this reel here is gonna be made to cast, let's say sub one gram, like trout magnet. We try casting, it was kind of tough uh, given that uh, I had a lot of line because I actually took 150 yards of line during the iCast show. I had it for my other reel. I just put it on thin PE line and we were casting. It was hard to cast because uh, we were all doing compensating and stuff like that, but Hunter, Man, that guy could cast really good, man. He was casting like pretty far, but um, he has to compensate a lot in order to get it out there. So I would say that we probably can't do the trout magnet, but I will definitely test it with less line uh, whenever I do the cast testing video for this reel. But given that this spool is this large, I would say that it's gonna be really, really good. Let's say around 1.5 grams and up. So you would definitely use some ultra light, but I think this reel here is gonna shine on a light and a medium light rod because it's so large, you'll be dispensing a lot of line. Therefore, you'll be casting very, very far. So I think the bass folks, the typical American uh, mainstream style, this, this is made for that. And I'm very excited to see how this thing performs. There you have it, my unboxing and first impression of the Bates Hundo LTS Bait Finesse Reel. Like out of the box, this thing is so impressive. There's like nothing I could say that's alarming saying that this is a bad reel at all. Like it's 
freaking fantastic. There's only one small concern that may not even be a concern until we actually do some actual fishing, right? Which is the speed of the worm gear for thin line users. And not everyone uses thin lines like me. Okay, so uh, I think um, since it's not really a, hey, this is a PE only reel, I don't think it's gonna be a big concern at all, especially for those who use uh, mono or floral. But for those who use PE, that's always a concern, but I wanna let y'all know, this thing right here have the right amount of drag there. So if you guys set your drag properly, it should not be a concern of thin lines digging onto each other. So with that said, I can't wait to get this out for some cast testing and also some fishing because Jimbo will be fishing the crap out of this reel, man, because it's, it's so beautiful. I mean, look at it one last time before I let y'all go, all right? If you guys want to learn more about this reel, I left a link to the website. You guys can check it out. You guys can buy it if you guys want to, all right? Because Jimbo is loving this reel. Thank you for watching. The fish don't wait. And I can't wait to do some fishing with this guy.